Welcome back. My name is Dr. Angela Siegel, and we're going to carry on with decisions. As we've stated before, our module goals are many, uh, but for this particular talk, we're going to look at further ways that we can implement decisions using the if statement. What's different about what we will do in this video is that we will explore those times where there are multiple alternative paths that one could take, or if they're nested decisions, a decision within a decision. So we'll see what that looks like and how we can approach it. If you're following along in our book, uh, we'll be looking at sections 3.3 and 3.4 of our book, Big Java Late Objects. We'll start off with multiple alternatives. Sometimes our decision is simple. We reach a point where we have to make a decision and we evaluate some Boolean condition. So we ask ourselves a question and it's either true or false. We do one thing if the condition is true, we do another if it's false. But other times it's more complicated than this. So at this juncture, we make use of multiple if statements. You can use multiple if statements to implement different alternatives. So if we have more than one alternative path that we might take, this is when we can make use of multiple if statements. Essentially, we're making one decision after another. So as we see here in this example, we first have one condition that we evaluate to be either true or false. If it's true, we do one thing. If it's not, we take another look and we say, does it meet this new condition? If so, follow that second true branch. If that is not the case, then we step into that third case. We'll see what that looks like in a real example. So for instance, we've talked about grades in the past. And so if we have a score uh, for a specific exam, then we can look and say, is that score greater than or equal to 90? If it is, then the result is that the grade, the letter grade should be an A plus. If not, we have to reevaluate because we don't yet have a letter grade. So we can then check if the score is greater than or equal to 85. If it is, which means it's less than 90, but it's greater than or equal to 85, so it's between 85 and 89, then the letter grade is an A. If that case isn't met, we can drop down to the next one. So now we have not passed the test of a score being greater than or equal to 90. We have not passed the test that the score is greater than or equal to 85. And so we know that our score is at most 84. So then we can check, is it greater than or equal to 80? Meaning it's between 80 and 84. If it is, that's an A minus. And we can carry on doing this for the rest of the grade scale. Let's take a quick look at a simple example of bus fare. Pretend that the city has a normal rate that applies to the bulk of the population, but they've decided that if you're under 20 years old, then you are deserving of a youth rate. You're either um, still at home or possibly in university or college, and so you should get a youth discount. If you're older, um, if you're 65 or older, if your age is greater than or equal to 65, then they've decided that you should get a senior discount. Otherwise, you just get the normal rate. So these are two examples where we have multiple alternatives. Your, your age is less than 20, your age is greater than or equal to 65, or it fits into the other bucket, in which case you get the normal rate. So what this looks like when we look at code is the following. We see here we have an initial bus fare set as a double, um, so it's a floating point type number, and it's 2.75. So our bus fare, our default bus fare is $2.75. And let's say that uh, the youth discount is 50 cents. So if you are a youth, the youth discount is applied if you're less than 20 years old, and you should be paying $2.25. Likewise, uh, if you're greater than or equal to 65, you're going to get a discount um, and it's gonna be 90 cents. So we would expect then that you'd pay $1.85 if, uh, if you qualify for a senior discount. So what we see is we set the base fare, so there's our normal rate, 
And then we step into these multiple alternatives. So we first check, is age less than 20? So we assume there's some integer, integer age that's already been received as input. If so, we're going to set the bus fare equal to the bus fare minus that youth discount. You could say, because I know that that new bus fare is $2.25, I could just put this in here. And I could just put $2.25 in here. However, sometimes it's easier to keep all of that information right at the top because what happens is then if you ever want to make changes to that, you know where to look. You just go change the discount and if you make use of it elsewhere in your program, it's all accounted for. So the next thing that happens is if the age is not less than 20, we drop into this else, but we immediately see an if. So this else if says we recognize the fact that we're not less than 20, but we're going to check another condition. And so this condition is the age being greater than or equal to 65. So we're not less than 20, and we're going to check if the age is greater than or equal to 65. So if the age is greater than or equal to 65, we want to apply that senior discount. And so it pulls our variable senior discount and subtracts it from that bus fare and prints senior discount applied. If the age was not less than 20 and the age was not greater than or equal to 65, we finally get to this last else uh, clause. And what happens here is we just output normal rate. Uh, so no discount is applied. We don't make note of anything. And, uh, and finally, we drop out of this if, else, if, else uh, structure. And what happens below that structure is done for everyone. So if your age is less than 20, greater than or equal to 65, if you're just hanging out at age 37, it's all okay. It applies to everyone. And so for everyone, we're going to print uh, bus, the bus fare that's associated. Okay, so if I drop into the program bus fare, you'll see that um, we've, we've imported our scanner, we're using that scanner in, we're going to have uh, someone enter their age, and then we are going to decide what which discounts are applied, just as in the previous page. So if you're less than 20, you get the youth discount, greater than or equal to 65, you get the senior discount, otherwise you get the normal rate. And we're, for everybody, we're going to print out that final bus fare. So what I'll do is is run this and it says please enter age. So if you're 37 years old, you're going to pay the normal rate. The normal rate is $2.75. Perfect. So let's run it again and say we're 17 years old. Now we should get this, the youth discount. And in fact, we do. The youth discount is applied and our bus fare is $2.25. I can run it again and say we're 79. If we're 79, the senior discount is applied and our bus fare is $1.85. So this is exactly what we were expecting. And, and, uh, and what's great about this is if the fares change, so if for some reason the city decides that the new bus fare is $3.15, the youth discount is 60 cents, and the senior discount is a whopping 95 cents, no problem. We can run it again and these updates will take effect. So as another example, we could take a look at hurricanes. Hurricanes fall into one of five categories based on their wind speed. And the damage that we expect for any given hurricane is based on which category of storm um, that is making landfall. So as you can see here, the storm categories are from category one all the way up to a major storm of category five. And the damage expected is based on that. So if we wanted to model that in terms of uh, expected damage based on storm category, we could check the category of storm that we receive and then output the expected damage. So if we have a category one hurricane making landfall, we'd want to let people know that 
this is would have very dangerous winds and some damage. Whereas if we have a category four hurricane, um, it's going to have catastrophic damage. And a category five storm would be catastrophic and many homes would be destroyed. So getting the right messaging out seems quite important. Um, if it's none of these categories, then we would want to let people know this is not classified as a hurricane because hurricanes come as categories one through five only. So let's switch it up. Let's look at a way that we can do this a little bit differently. Uh, and this is an option in Java that you can make use of. It's called a switch statement. And this is when you have a variable or value that's going to come in very specific uh, possibility set. So in this case, we're only allowing storms to be uh, value one, two, three, four, and five, and everything else we're going to treat the same. So if somebody decides to input that the category of storm is minus 13 or six, we're going to say that's not right. Um, this is not classified as a hurricane. Um, and so this is one, this is the syntax for a switch in Java, where you take the switch statement and you give it the value that you're checking against. And then you look at very specific cases. So this is this is kind of like saying case one is like saying category equals one. So in the, in the event that the category is equal to one, we're going to output very dangerous winds, some damage. And then break means drop all the way out of this entire switch statement. Case two, meaning the category is, uh, the value held in the variable category is equal to two, then we're gonna output extremely dangerous winds, extensive damage, and break. And that break lets us know we're gonna drop all the way out of that switch. It's a model for that if, else if, else if, else if, else uh, option. It's just a different way of doing this. Um, but it's useful in some cases and it's important to know that this does exist. And so you will see this in code. So if you wanna take a look later and compare the two, these are doing the same thing. They're just doing it in different ways. So let's look at a much simpler example of soccer. So we have a game where we have as input a score A and a score B from two teams. And if score A is greater than score B, we're going to want to say that team A wins. They scored more points. Otherwise, following the false branch, uh, we want to check if score B is greater than score A. If that's true, team B wins. Otherwise, it was a tie. Because the only way to arrive at this path is if score A is equal to score B. We can see that we always end up down in the same location following along in the program once this if, else if, else statement ends. So stepping into nested branches, this can get a little bit more interesting. And this is, if you're following along in the book, we're at Big Java Late Objects, section 3.4. So you can nest an if statement inside of either branch of an if statement. So we see we start into a decision and it can be true or false. Um, and stepping out of that, we can make more decisions. So following the true branch, we could make another decision, decision A. And if that condition is true, we'll do A1. If false, we'll do A2 and then carry on with the rest of the program. On the false branch, we could also have made another set of decisions. So decision B can be true or false, and we'll have different pathways from that depending on that output. So what does that look like in terms of a real world example? And when would we see that? What if we're paying a bill at a restaurant? So we get the tab and we have information about the number of people in our party, uh, whether or not the tip is included in the bill. So we have, a question, are we choosing to pick up the tab or not? If we are, uh, it, we'll have to check, was the tip included? Sometimes if a party is big enough, they'll just include the tip. Always make sure to check. Um, and so if the tip was included, we're gonna pay the full tab as it is. If the tip was not included, then we're gonna pay that full tab plus 20% tip. It's always good to go a little over 15. So if it's false, um, 
meaning we're choosing not to pick up the tab, we want to split the bill, then we still have to do that quick check. Is the tip automatically included in our bill? If it is, we're just going to pay our portion of the tab. Look at the number of people around the table, divide by that number, and off we go. Um, if the tip was not included, we'll pay our portion, but we should definitely pay the extra 20% to make sure that our server is tipped appropriately. So we can take in some information. So here you can see uh, we have a double variable bill holding the price of the bill. We have a Boolean variable. This is going to be true or false. Uh, and we'll cover that in our next set of uh, topics, which checks, is the tip included? Uh, finally, we'll check the number in the party, an integer, and another true-false variable picking up tab. So what we'll do to model this is, is check, are we picking up the tab? If the picking up, if picking up tab is true, uh, then we're going to step into that question of, okay, we're paying it all, but are we paying exactly what it says because the tip is already built into the bill or are we paying that extra 20%? If the tip is included, we're going to pay what exactly what's on the bill. Otherwise, else, uh, we're going to pay the bill plus 20% or the bill times 1.2. If we're not picking up the tab, we'll drop into that elf uh, portion and we'll see that our portion is the bill divided by the number of people in our party. And if the tip is included, we're going to pay our portion as it is. If the tip is not included, we're going to pay our portion plus 20%. So let's check our understanding of that. If the bill is $100 and the tip is not included, what do you pay if you wish to pick up the tab? So the first thing to do is check where does this fall, where do we fall in this flow chart? So we see that we're picking up the tab, so that we're going to follow that, that true branch, right? So here we are, picking up the tab is true. Is the tip included? Well, it says no. The bill was $100 and the tip is not included. So we want to make sure that we're following that false branch. The tip was not included. And so we want to pay the full tab plus 20%. So 20% of $100 is $20. So our, we're planning to pay $120. Let's take a quick look at what that looks like in Java code. So we've got our, our bill splitting example, we have a scanner, we're reading in the price of the bill, whether or not the, the tip is included, the number at the table, and if we're picking up the tab. So we'll run this and we'll enter the bill was $100. The tip is included? False. It is not. The number at the table? Let's say there are five of us. It actually doesn't matter in this case because we're going to pick up the tab. So true. I plan to pick up the tab. The tip's not included. The price of the bill is $100. And it says I should pay $120. Let's do the same thing. Let's run it again and see what happens if we leave the price at $100. And we'll say that uh, the tip this time is not included. But we're going to split the bill. So I don't want to share this time. I'm not going to pick up the tab. I'm going to share this with everybody. And what that means is we should each pay $20, but the tip was not included. So we're going to pay $20 plus 20% of that $20. So 10% is $2. That means 20% is four. Our bill should be $24. And in fact, the program gets it right. Pay $24. And so you can try this out on your own, um, but that's nested branches, and the fun that can be had within. Thanks for watching. See you next time. There is more to this video, right? False. But there is more to come. True. I have no clue what's, what comes next. False. Wait, are you giving us a hint? <laughs> True. Next time we'll talk about... Boolean variables and operators, true and false. Thanks for watching. See you next time.